for the episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to builtbar.com and use promo code Locked On to get 20% off your next order. It is Monday. February 22nd in the year 2021. And just yesterday, your Buckeyes lost their first game in quite a long time to the Wolverines 92 to 87. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well. Locked on Buckeyes. Lined up for today's segment number two. We'll talk about a few things that did not go the Buckeyes' way, that they did wrong in yesterday's game, segment three, why the Buckeyes cannot hold their head down after yesterday's loss. We begin today's show talking about what was, to me, the best college basketball game this year. Earlier in the college basketball season, it was a foregone conclusion, well, to many people believed Gonzaga versus Baylor was going to be the game of the year in college basketball. And that was something that happened, that what people were saying before the season, Gonzaga and Baylor, they were going to meet early on in the season in a non-conference game. One, potentially, versus number two, and I'm just going to sit here and say, I was right there with them. Gonzaga, now that we see him play, their boys are good. Baylor, they've been off for a while. They've come back from their COVID pause tomorrow. And I was looking forward to that game. And before the season, nobody thought Ohio State would be this good. I don't think anybody thought the team up north would be this good, this hot, with only one loss on the year under Juwan Howard's second year as the head coach of that team. We didn't get. Gonzaga versus Baylor earlier in the year. I say we as college basketball fans, we did get Ohio State versus the team up north. Woo-hoo-wee! And the only thing that would ma- that would have made this game better is if the shot was full and sold out. Because, man, you had back and forth. You had a battle. You had bodies hitting the floor. You had players making big time shots. You had tough rebounds. You had a player getting poked in the eye into Wayne Washington Jr. You had an EJ Liddell hitting a busting, hitting and busting the eye, not figuratively, but not literally, but figuratively, busting the eye of a seven foot two giant. You had so much in this game. And it truly was a game that lived up to the hype, and maybe exceeded it. You had it on CBS. You had Kevin Harlan and Bill Raftery on the call. The only thing that would have possibly made this better from a broadcasting standpoint is that the Buckeyes had a Buckeye of their own calling the game in Clark Kellogg. Clark was there in the studio, but it would have been nice if he was there calling the game with Kevin Harlan because that would have made it ooh a lot better than it was. And I love me some Bill Raftery. Was hoping to get some onions at the end of the game via a call from him from a big shot from a Buckeye, but that didn't happen. First half of this game, oh my goodness, the three-point shooting was hot. 10 of 13 shooting from the Wolverines, 6 of 13 shooting from the Buckeyes, both from three-point land. And from downtown, oh my goodness, seemed like the Wolverines would not miss. Back to back to back to back. Shots in in the second half or at halftime, I saw many people on the Twitter saying, is it possible that the Wolverines shoot this well in the second half? There's no way the Wolverines can shoot this well in the second half from downtown. There's no way the Buckeyes can give up that many open shots from downtown in the second half. Well, some, well, one of those things was right. <laughs> the Wolverines didn't shoot that hot, not, well, not as hot from downtown in the second half. But it surely seemed like the Buckeyes still gave up enough, or way too many, not enough, way too many open threes in this game, both in the first 20 minutes of play and in the final 20 minutes of play as well. Buckeyes didn't have balanced scoring, didn't have the scoring that was needed in this game. You had a player hit 30, another player hit 20. One player hit 15, but outside of that, the next closest score in the game as far as the next score from the guy that hit 15 was six. And that player was Justice Suing, who went two for five from the field. The number three team in the country surely played like the number three team in the country. And I would not be shocked if they jumped Baylor to be the number two team in the country when the AP poll rankings come out a little bit 
in about around 12 noon today, if you're listening to this early in the, earlier in the day on Monday, the, I believe the AP poll rankings come out around 12 noon on today. So I would not be shocked if we see the Wolverines jump up to two because, man, they looked really, really, really good on offense and on defense. On offense for the game, I'll do some quick uh, score recaps for the Wolverines. Dickinson had 22 points. Livers had 12 points. Smith had 11 points. Brooks had 17. Brown had 15. He had two key, uh, two key points, a big basket, in about the five and a half minute mark in the second half. We'll talk about that in the very next segment because I think that was the pivotal point and turning point in this game. Ohio State showed they can play with one of the top dogs in the country, but they also showed that they could not overcome that as well. Someone said, Buckeye fans will not like the outcome of this or this conversation, possibly, but someone said that the game, Ohio State versus the team, the team up north in college football in 2006 is very similar to the game in college basketball, Ohio State versus the team up north in 2021. The one big difference about that was I don't think I don't think that Wolverines team would have beat that Florida Gators team in the national championship. Those boys that Urban had down there in uh, down there in Gainesville, I almost said Coral Gables, that's two different towns. And if you're a Gators fan listening to this, I apologize because I know mixing those towns up could be a fireball or an offense that becomes very offensive. But I believe this. Between the top four teams in the country right now, Gonzaga, Baylor, the team up north, and Ohio State, in that order respectively, I believe all four of them can win the national championship this year. I do also believe Ohio State is on the outside of that conversation looking in as far as one, two, three, and four. I do believe they're the fourth fourth ranked team amongst those four. But I do think on any given day, any of those teams can beat each other. I think Gonzaga is expanding themselves and showing they're a little bit better than the rest. But any thing is possible. And I would not count, count out this Buckeye team yet. One step step away very quickly. When we come back, we'll talk about a few mistakes that the Buckeyes made in this game that really determined what the final outcome would be. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over, but NBA, college basketball, and the NHL are in full swing. Bet Online even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV, real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. Bet Online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to betonline.ag on your computer or your mobile device and use promo code locked on to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Once again, that is promo code locked on. That is L O C K E D O N to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Get more of the sports news you need in less time with our new Locked On Today podcast. Peter Bukowski hosts Locked On Today, a daily podcast breaking down the biggest stories with analysis from our local experts. Start your day with all the sports news you need in under 20 minutes. Subscribe to Locked On Today wherever you get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to Locked on Buckeyes, I want to say welcome or even watching as well. Welcome to those of you watching via WKYC on YouTube. Or if this is your first time in a long time listening or watching watching the podcast, I want to say welcome back. Locked on Buckeyes drops a fresh episode every Monday through Friday. You can check that. You can catch that on YouTube via the WKYC YouTube page or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, just in a couple places. You should subscribe so you don't miss a beat. About an hour before the game started, I was on Twitter scrolling, just got out of church. I was looking to see some last-minute notes, what people were saying, what the conversation of the day was, what beat writers were writing on the Twitter, Twitter page, just getting some of their final thoughts out. And it came out that Musa Jallo, a key contributor off the bench for the Buckeyes, would not be able to play in this game. 
I don't know what kind of impact that had on the outcome, but I think it, uh, for, on the outcome as far as who would have won the game if Musa Jallo played. But I do think some of the three-point shooting you see from the Wolverines, one or two of those may not have gone if you have Musa Jallo defending a key player. Someone that's just hitting shot after shot after shot in the first half and in the second half. Because I do think defensively, one thing that hurt the Buckeyes in this game was defensive rotation and the ability for the Wolverines to move the ball around quickly, swing the ball around, and for the Buckeyes to be playing catch-up. Well, I do think if you have a better on-ball defender, on the ball handler at the time, getting and starting the ball to be swung around the three-point land or to be moved around to the open player or the open guy, that slows down. Because the defender is, is one thinking, okay, cool, I got me a defender on me, I got a guy here. But then he has to realize he can't just make his normal, average, everyday move against, against Musa Jallo because he's not your everyday, regular, old Joe defender when he's on the basketball court. Think back to Thursday's game against Penn State. Highlighted and documented here on the podcast, Musa Jallo also had nine big points as well. He had six via a backdoor cut. I believe four of those came in the first half. Another two came in the second half off of a dish from C.J. Walker. And then C.J. Walker also hit Musa Jallo in the, in the corner on the second half, the bottom left of your screen. Cash money. That boy went in, goes back to the other end of the court to get on defense. Musa Jallo. Why am I leading off with him in the, sec in the second part? Because defense was a part of the game that the Buckeyes needed to play a whole lot better. Now you're going to say, Jay, what do the stats say about the shooting? What do the stats say about Ohio State and the team up north? Where is the deciding factor? Well, here we go. Ohio State shot 53% from the field. The team up north shot 53% as well. Three-point shooting. The Wolverines made a uh, Wolverines shot 48%. Ohio State shot 50%. Both teams made 11, 11 to 23 for the Wolverines, 11 to 22 for Ohio State. Free throw shooting. Wolverines went 19 to 24, Ohio State 12 to 13, 79% for the Wolverines shooting from the charity stripe. Ohio State 92% shooting from the charity stripe as well. So you're saying, Jay, so as far as the categories, as far as statistically and percentagely, who won the battles? Well, field goal shooting from the field tied. Buckeyes win the battle, the percentage from the free throw line and from the three-point line downtown. Both teams made 11. Yes, both teams made 11 three-pointers, but the Wolverines made seven more free throws in the game. Another key thing. Now, you're talking about Jay going around the yard and passing the ball around. Think about in the first half. Think about not, not the free throw shooting, the three-point shooting. Yes, the Wolverines only made one three-point shot in the second half alone. We'll talk about that here in a second. But if you go into the first half of the game, think about how many times the Buckeyes are playing catch-up or they were chasing or kind of just uh, catch me if you can. That's the way the ball was going. Pop, pop, pop. You swing the ball around. I can think of at least two times that Ohio State was playing catch-up via a swing pass or a cross-court pass where the ball went from one three-point line to the other, cast money, Wolverines, back to the other end of the court. Defensive rotations weren't the best. I know a couple times uh, Livers was on the top was – I don't forget what half this was. From the top side of the screen, three-point line in the corner, uh, dribbled around, got open. EJ Liddell hit EJ Liddell with a little a quick jab, not a not, not a, a long jab, a quick jab, like he's going to drive baseline. EJ Liddell went back one, two steps, didn't even try to recover, and then Livers hits the shot. Oh, you want to know something else about not trying to recover? Justice suing. It was a time that I fast fast break. I forget the whole sequence prior, but fast break Wolverines. Wolverines are driving. There's a defender there guarding the man with the ball, but stop ball was not there simply because the the, the Wolverine had the had the angle. Well, Justice Suing is on the right side. Didn't sprint down to try to, try to double team or affect the shot. Kind of jogging, jogging. Luckily, luckily the Buckeyes were bailed out because back back down on, on offense, the Wolverines looked like they were going to score via the fast break. It was a foul called going the other way. But that jog by Justice Suing, I noticed that. Also, I also noticed EJ Liddell. There were sometimes 
I think, remember I mentioned, if you listened to the Locked Up Big Ten episode with myself and Big Ten Dave Stevens, I mentioned I think the Wolverines had fresher legs. It is nothing to knock what the Buckeyes have done this year. But when you have 23 days in between games, you get a lot of time to recuperate, a lot of time to rest up them bones, and that muscle gets to recover in a way that it doesn't normally get to do during a regular season. And we see those fresh legs. We see that in a three-point shooting because playing a basketball game takes a lot out of you. Shooting three-point shots consistently takes a lot out of you. And being able to shoot like that in the first half of that game, woo-hoo-wee, buddy, yeah. I believe fresher legs, That was if that was a uh, contest to say who had the fresher legs in the season, the Wolverines or the Buckeyes. Well, before, you would have said the Wolverines too. But after the game, not just because of the final outcome, but simply because of the way the game was played, you're going to say, whoo-wee, the Wolverines win that one. There was a key sequence, and I personally think this basket was the deciding point in the game. Five and a half minutes left to start. Started with six and a half minutes left. E.J. Liddell got fouled by Dickinson at the line to shoot two free throws. Liddell missed the first, makes the second. Game is tied at 69 69. Wolverines go down on offense. Brown, Shonday Brown Jr. misses the three. Who gets the rebounds? Was it the Buckeyes or the Wolverines? It was the Wolverines. Isaiah Leverage gets the rebound, passes it back out, moves the ball around. Mike Smith gets, an, gets a three. I believe, I believe both of those shots by Livers. No, Livers got the rebound. I believe that shot by Smith was an open three. Miss. Who gets the rebound? Shonday Brown Jr. So the guy that misses the first three didn't get the get, didn't get the first rebound, but comes back down, gets the second rebound. Ball goes back out. This shot's a little bit quicker. Goes to Isaiah Livers, misses a three. Who of all people? You think block out the guy that had the previous rebound. You don't block him out. Sean Day Brown Jr. gets the rebound and puts the ball back up 71 to 69. And I do think with five and a half minutes left, that sequence right there, you all remember it. The Wolverines, their players were hyped, the coaches were hyped. And I'm sitting here thinking, that's it. That's it right there. A Wolverine fan that I communicate every now and with on Twitter, I even said, I think that was the deciding factor in the game, that two points. You said, Jay, it was, it was just a putback. But those moments right there, those are the moments where you win or lose games. Let's just say Buckeyes get the rebound. Buckeyes go to the other end of the court, and the Buckeyes end up scoring two points, and now the Wolverines are on their heels. Different thought process for both teams the next time down the court. Done with that. I didn't check my heart rate, heart rate right there when going through that little sequence. I wonder how high it got. Was in the game? I was upset. Right now? Yeah. I'm feeling it. When we come back, guys, we're going to talk about why the Buckeyes cannot hold their head down or let their head be held down because there's a lot of basketball to be played and anything can happen on any day in the tournament. There's a good chance there's somebody like me that loves a good protein bar. And I recently... Took a protein bar to work on my break halfway through my shift. I ate that thing and said, hey, how about I just use a protein, uh, a built bar and some water to get me through. I didn't eat a whole lot. Nope, 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 nope. Just a protein bar. Boom. Let's keep going. Ooh-wee. Talk about the amount of energy that I had. Talk about how good these things taste. I talk about it all the time. I'm I'm picky with a lot of things, and I'm picky with built bar. Ooh-hoo-hoo. These things taste so good and gave me the fuel and added and allowed me to just keep on going throughout my day with a little bit extra energy than expected. Guys, Built Bar is great for the person that is health conscious. It'll help you lose or maintain weight while indulging in it in a delicious treat. Bars are low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, and they're great for the keto diet. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code Locked on to get 20% off your next order. Use promo code locked on. That is L O C K E D O N for 20% off at builtbar.com. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson host Locked On's Peacock and Williamson every Monday through Friday. Brian and Matt give you the national perspective all around the NFL, covering all the latest news and insights on every game, team, and move around the NFL. Get your picks, previews, 
and much more every weekday with the Peacock and Williamson podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buckeyes lost. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. Five point loss to the game to the Wolverines. Never want to lose to your rival. No, nope, don't want to do that at all. But there's a lot of basketball. Oh my goodness. A lot of basketball to be played. Just about a week ago, last Saturday, I believe, there was a mock bracket put together by the NCAA Tournament Committee, which had the Buckeyes as a number one seed. Gonzaga, Baylor, the team up north, and Ohio State. All deserving. All top four teams currently. But I do think there's a good chance those teams could be the number one seeds in the tournament, which starts, oh, about a month from now. You, you may be saying, how in the world could that happen? How in the world could Ohio State lose right now on February 21st, just a day ago, and still be a possible number one seed in the tournament? Well, if you, as you look at the rest of the landscape, the rest of the college basketball landscape, yes, Illinois is right there. Yes, Houston is right there. But I do think those top four teams, plus Ohio State plays Illinois on March the 6th, the last game of Ohio, for Ohio State in the Big Ten regular season, I do think they're right there in the thick of things. They are literally right there. The number one team in the land, Gonzaga, just won another game. I believe that puts them at... 23 and 0 on the season. They beat San Diego on Saturday. I have to get my days correctly. Had a, they played them on Saturday and beat them 106 to 69. It's not a typo. They didn't stutter. I'm looking right at my, at the screen right now, and that is correct. Gonzaga beat San Diego 106 to 69. Remember why I say that Gonzaga's good at basketball and Gonzaga Baylor would have been really, really good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would have been. And I think Gonzaga would have won because those boys could put could the ball in the basket. Number two team in the land, the Baylor Bears. Have not played in a very long time, I believe. Their last game was about 19 days ago on February the 2nd. They do play tomorrow uh, against the, I forget who they're playing, but they do play tomorrow, first game back after a long COVID pause. We'll see a lot about Baylor and how Baylor plays the basketball, how good they are after that long layoff tomorrow. Because as we saw against the Wolverines, the first half against with the Wolverines, the first half that they played against Wisconsin about a week ago, the first game back, they were just feeling around. They were just feeling around and seeing what Wisconsin was going to do, how their legs would feel, how their shot would get off in, in gameplay. So much just to happen there. Then all of a sudden, second half, they cranked up, turned the heat on on the defense, and, man, they, they put the ball in the basket. The number three team in the land just won yesterday. Number four just lost yesterday. Number five team in the land just beat Minnesota. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, 94-63. to 63. That's Illinois. I'm really looking forward to two games for Ohio State and one uh, going throughout the season. Well, all the games that Ohio State has, I'm looking forward to. But I have this one circled on my calendar. Ohio State, Illinois, March 6th. If it's not circled on your calendar, I encourage you, circle it on yours because that's going to be, whoo you think Ohio State, you think Ohio State and the team of North is going to be good. Ohio State, Illinois could be right behind them. And then also, Houston, just be, just be Cincinnati, who I believe was a 500 team on the season, 90 to 52. But don't hold your head down. Anything can happen during any season, during any day, especially in the tournament. I'm not saying what's going to happen. I'm not going to predict. The, I'm not going to predict the future. But one game on any day, anything. Can happen. Thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked on Buckeye. Remember, guys, five-star reviews, five-star reviews. Fill up the review section on Apple with five-star reviews. Other places you can enjoy Locked on Buckeyes are Google Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, and even iHeartRadio. Just to name a few places, you can subscribe to Locked on Buckeyes so you don't miss a beat. Come back tomorrow. We will continue the conversation about the basketball. And on Wednesday, Football Wednesdays will be back.